Introducing uh, Mike Tyson. I want a complete heart fight. He was a teenage mugger and predator. He had 38 arrests as a juvenile. By the time he was 13, Tyson was sentenced to a juvenile center in upstate New York where his luck changed when he was brought to the attention of a boxing man by the name of Customato. Customato was, in a sense, the modern-day father of boxing. He often said, what I do is discover and uncover. In the 40s, it was Floyd Patterson. And in the 50s, it was Jose Torres who he transformed into a champion. But perhaps his greatest prize was the 13-year-old boy brought to him seven years ago from a nearby correctional institution. The uncovering process would now begin. With me, the guy comes to me with a spark. I fan the spark until it becomes a flame. I feed the flame until it becomes a fire. Then I feed the fire until it becomes a roaring blaze. That's what I have to do. We trained them, myself and, and Teddy, at the beginning. We trained him steadily until finally started to get boxing, and then he developed the, the ability to slip punches and so forth. When he got to the point of slipping punches, we had a difficult time getting people to box with him because he proved to be a very hard puncher with both hands. That's it. There you go. Now you got again, again. Who's the last guy to stop? Time. Very good. That's fine. I'm a champion for the same reason my boys become champions. I'm very determined. I believe in what I'm doing, and I can't be dissuaded. I cannot be dissuaded. I tell them that uh, at the beginning, when they start, if they will do their job as well as I do mine, the result is a foregone conclusion. It was the great boxing trainer, Gus D'Amato, who finally turned Mike's life around, took him under his wing, and rechanneled Mike's energies into boxing. D'Amato feels that Tyson will be the next Muhammad Ali, and he should know. Ali was also one of his students. Tyson not only has a very hard, terrific punch in either hand, but he has developed elusive qualities and has the most important quality, the will to win. He has the desire to win. He wants to be the best. And with a fellow with this type of competitive spirit, plus the knowledge that he has gained and the punching power, I can't see him lose. But perhaps the most remarkable attribute that young Mike Tyson carries with him is his age. You see, Mike Tyson is only 16 years old. I came from a bad neighborhood in Brooklyn, and you know, and you know, living in Brooklyn, things happen, and then it goes further and further and beyond, so I won't even talk about that. And eventually, I met a friend that knew Cuss, and that's how this situation happened. I feel I was born to fight because I have no other interest in anything else. Anybody's a fighter in their own right. You're a fighter, I'm a fighter. Everyone that's in this room, even the newspapermen, they're fighters. But everybody don't get up every morning and run. Everybody don't go to the gym every morning. And everybody don't have enough discipline to wait in the locker room for two hours or three hours, then go in the ring and do what they've been taught all those years in the gym. And so that's what separates a champion from a mediocre fighter. The objective of all this intense willpower between Mike and Cuss are those moments in the ring that'll perhaps lead to Olympic gold and beyond. But uh, as it stands now, it's become difficult for Mike to gain any ring experience. Recently, he's been victorious only by forfeit. It seems that no amateur heavyweight wants to get into the ring with Mike Tyson. And until someone does show up, Mike has been forced to spar with seasoned pros. <laughs> Whatever troubles Tyson was encountering outside the ring, it was not affecting the natural killer instinct inside. With Cuss and Teddy Atlas's guidance, Tyson had beaten every amateur opponent, and in 1982, he defended his Junior Olympics title. His reputation had preceded him. The year before, some of the less developed fighters intentionally lost their matches, terrified of facing Tyson and risking serious physical injury.
Halpin corner, they might, you never know, be harboring thoughts of him being the first man to take Mike Tyson the full distance. Would be a first, wouldn't it? Round four then. Oh, good shot. That's a short sneak ride. Halpin's head jerked back. Now, Tyson has switched back to orthodox for this round. He's uh, maybe had enough of playing around with Southpaw, maybe. It was just a little vanity exercise. Maybe Kevin Rooney has said to him, OK, boy, you've had your fun. Now time for business. Well, this is a much slower and much more measured Mike Tyson. And Albany tonight, good right hand, help him down. You, behind the camera, have the most perfect view of that. Only difference is, you saw the punch. Don Halpin didn't. Mandatory eight. Early in the fourth. Can Tyson finish this? I think so. I think so. That's enough. Now that last right hander, that was questionable. Tyson celebrates. I didn't like to see that because Halpin was down. It was the manner of his victory, that one last right hander. And they're keeping Halpin. Now, this, this I don't like to see. This is a little bit worrying. Halpin took one punch too many. The referee, I don't think he could have done much more than he did, to be quite honest with you. You must be pleased with Mike's development so far. You have one of one of boxing's most exciting young fighters. Well, it's true, Steve, but one of the problems that uh, we have, Bill Caton and I, managing Mike, is that when you manage a fighter who's a devastating puncher, you cannot really calculatingly plan for a fight to go eight rounds or ten rounds because uh, Mike punches so hard that uh, eventually the, the, the fighter goes out very early, which... Uh, is a disadvantage for Mike because he doesn't get the rounds of fighting that uh, mm -hmm. you people would call experience. Right. <laughs> okay. Mike, tonight you're fighting a fighter, 196 pounds. You came in, I believe, your career high in terms of weight. Um, is a cruiser? He's really a cruiser weight. Is this uh, something you're working on for speed? Nothing at all. Um, again, you're asking the wrong person, but mm -hmm. I didn't pick the opponent. You have to talk to Jim Jacobs. But as of the fight and everything, I'm looking at him just another passing point to the title. Mm -hmm. Whoever's in the way, I don't care who they are at the moment. They're just, people might say opponents, but as I say, I'm just going through them because this is for real and Mike Tyson's for real.